Okay, we're back at the water pump issue now, and that's resolved. This is the point where the spout or pipe from the water pump goes into the engine block. There is no physical connection between the water pump and the engine block. There is a big black O-ring that goes between the engine block and that cast that you see, that cast fitting, that flange. This particular water pump, the outlet pipe is cut crooked. It doesn't go all the way in. So I was able to use the old flattened black O-ring along with this packing, this Teflon packing gland. Some of you old timers that have worked with radiator valves or water valves have seen the graphite packing string. This is a newer style, so I thought I'd try it. So I wrap this around the water pump pipe behind the rubber o-ring. So the black rubber o-ring goes against the engine block. This goes behind the black o-ring. Then I swoosh up the whole works with my chief gasket compound surrounding all of this. Then this squeezes inside the taper of that flange and bolts the whole thing together let it sit for two days and it sets and forms an excellent seal between the water pump outlet pipe and the engine block. So that solved that problem. Then the next problem was going into parts missing from the governor. So I had to devise a way to set it so it would idle properly using a spring and using the buffer adjustment or the droop adjustment for a throttle speed adjustment. Somebody has removed the parts of the governor that adjust the speed. So now the engine starts and idles smoothly. So that was yesterday's project. Today's project is going to be freeing up the transmission reverse solenoid. By the way, just a reminder that there has been nothing on this bus that's worked. Nothing. So it's like I just went to the factory and built a brand new bus. It's taken me two and a half months, but because of changes in my own physiology and because of the unusually hot weather, I've only spent about three hours a day on this bus. This bus should have had about 10 hours a day with two people. So anyway, we're getting it. I'm almost at the point where this bus will move under its own power. So that's going to be about it today, unless you have some questions, Glenn, that you want to ask. Or Buddy Buddy standing here behind Glenn. That luckily for me, they've come out to help me today. I can't think of any right offhand. All right, well. That's good then. Well, let's wrap it up for now. It's 81 degrees. It's 9 a.m. Thursday, June something, 17th. 17th. And we're in Bloomington, Minnesota. Further and updates to follow. Updates to follow. Film at 11. Stay tuned. <laughs> no, unlike Jawtooth, there is no wait, there's more. <laughs> No, don't wait. <laughs> Go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow.
See if that reverse lever works. It only moves out about one eighth of an inch. Okay, but we have determined the solenoid is not, the piston is not jammed in. The... It feels free. Okay. So in second gear, that should pull out how far, do you think? Oh, probably an inch. All right, you keep pressure on that when I say, I think you can hear me, can't you? The door is echoing my voice back there. Yeah, as long as the engine is not running, I can hear. Okay. 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 Okay, it's still the same. It did not move out. Nope, it will not move out. There, there it went. There. there, it came out farther there. Oh. I think it, I think it came out, Phil. Okay. I'm now. Okay, it feels like it's still out. What do you mean by out? It's out, it's out farther than it was before and it won't go back in. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the routine is beginning with neutral, hold the button, shift to first, and then shift to second, holding the button. Now, let's see what it looks like. Okay. So, yeah, it, it's out about oh, three quarters, half an inch there. And that's as far as it came out. Okay. The next thing then is to determine if the electric circuit is still working. Or ever it did work. Or it did work once. Light come on? No. Because of because the uh, the buzzer slowed down. Try it again. I didn't see any light. <laughs> Nothing.
Well, now we got the reverse solenoid working good, and the problem, uh, as usual, was electrical. This relay in the rear control box controls the solenoid, the, uh, and I'll show you that now so we can get back to that. Let me walk around here, and I'll show you the reverse solenoid. Is this heavy-duty device here? This is a big electric piston that draws a lot of current. So we don't have this connected directly to the switch up front for the driver to operate. The switch up front instead operates this relay. By the way, the guy that invented this, the guy that developed the two doors on one hinge system, uh, after these buses were manufactured, he was committed to an insane asylum. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what happens on this relay, carrying that heavy current from that, so the power comes from the switch up front, operates this relay, if you can get in here and see, see, see the movement of the relay, mm -hmm. see the contacts. Okay, from years of use, what happens is these contacts get pitted, and then from use, years of misuse, they become corroded. So I take some number 400 sandpaper, you can use three or even two, fold it over and slide it in the open space of the relay like this. So what I do now is I move this sandpaper back and forth, or emery cloth, and put your thumb against the armature of the relay. So both points are in contact with the sandpaper. And do this, and I work it around a little, and then blow the debris out, and tap it, shake things loose. The next thing you want to do is loosen these wires, loosen these uh, terminals, rather, because these wires corrode, uh, even under the pressure of the screw, these corrode. So loosen these screws, take these contacts off, and clean them with the same paper. I've already done that, uh, so I just want to show you that. That is why the reverse solenoid did not work. Now, the switch up front was also defective. Remember I told you about those push button switches on these silver sides that they corrode and don't make contact, and there's a video on that. The last video shows you how to take those switches out and clean them and put them back in. So that's been done. So we're not gonna show. So now, this concludes the part about fixing the reverse solenoid. So getting back to the part about uh, the guy being in an insane asylum, uh, Glenn, who's taking the shots we're doing today, telling me about things that used to irritate him, and he has a list. You said you had a list, Glenn? I, I have a list of all of the things that I don't understand, and every once in a while I check one off because some, all of a sudden I'll understand it, but I keep adding things about four to one compared to what I'm checking off. So it just keeps getting longer and longer and longer as I get older. Has anybody ever suggested that you don't have enough to do? Oh, many times, but that's got nothing to do with this. Oh, you mean you can work and still come up with... Well, I used to keep a list of that, too. Uh, and, but the bigger list was the people I didn't like. And the problem was, is my name kept rising up to the top of the list. So I decided to stop keeping a list. And as far as things that I don't understand, I just lay it off to people who are crazy. Uh, I am the standard of sanity, in case you didn't know that. I knew that, yes. Okay, good. Yes. Well, Absolutely. So probably what you need to do then is uh, just watch my YouTube videos, and you'll learn sanity from all the comments that I get. You're the poster boy for sanity. That's right. Uh, if there's anything you need to know about being sane, uh, you can ask me. And if you don't like it, then consider your insanity, and I'll have something to talk about. So there, that settles that. Now back to bus business. I intended to show you a while back uh, how to check your fuel supply to see if you have suction leaks. 
And so what I have created out of a piece of plastic tubing that's available from Amazon and one inch threaded bushing and using some kind of super glue, whatever, uh, screw this in. You don't need to pre-tap that. Screw that in carefully so you don't split the plastic. And this creates a viewer to watch your fuel travel from the final filter into the engine. It's a homemade sight glass. It's a homemade sight glass and you connect it to the output of the final filter. The reason for that is you can find suction leaks or pressure leaks somewhere in the system. And suction leaks will occur before the fuel pump. The fuel flow comes into the engine from the fuel tank into the pre-filter. It passes through the pre-filter into the fuel pump. Now, from the point of the tank to the fuel pump is suction. And suction is 10 times stronger than compression. So, all fuel leaks that are invisible causing the engine to run rough are on the suction side of the fuel system. Now when we get through the filter, which itself, or I mean through the uh, fuel pump, which itself can create suction. Suction leaks can occur in the fuel pump because of the wear in the fuel pump. So from the output side of the fuel pump to the injectors is pressure. If there's a leak there, it would show up. It would be a wet spot. But suction is much stronger than pressure, compression, and you won't see suction leaks. So that's the purpose of this. I repaired a suction leak here and didn't get it on camera. So I'm going to fake uh, reality here and show you what happens with fuel passing into the engine that has air in it from suction leaks. So you can hold the camera while I hook up the battery.
So, one more little thing. Uh, if you have the problem with the engine running rough and you don't know why, start there. I have yet to find a bus that doesn't have a suction fuel leak. I got lucky on this one that it was just the hookup from the pipe coming from the fuel tank selector switch on this silver side to this point here. So uh, that will do it. But wait, there's more, as Jawtooth would say. By the way, uh, watch Jawtooth's Jaw railroad videos. If you like train stuff, uh, check on Jawtooth. I like his videos on trains. So uh, there are a couple little things left here. First, we have oil running down from the valve cover. Uh, I have tried 173 times to use an old valve cover gasket. How many? Well, maybe it was 170. Yeah, I was exaggerating. Probably more like 154. <laughs> and uh, I have yet to succeed in using an old valve cover gasket. So just buy a new valve cover gasket and install it. Then, uh, when I was talking about, what was I talking about? Fuel leaks. Oh, yeah. Then there's a little piece here on how I look for fuel leaks. Because you get your engine running and it's running crappy and you don't know why. And you say, well, I got everything timed right. The injectors are all good. And I don't know what. It's because you have suction leaks in the fuel system. So uh, I put a little bit of that in, how I handle that issue. Uh, and Glenn was here, so we got that on camera. So I think that covers everything now. Uh, and uh, as, again, once more, thank you for being here with me. And uh, leave comments. Leave comments. And I enjoy all the compliments I get. Thank you. It encourages me to keep going with this. Uh, I don't say thank you, thank you to everybody. But believe me, I see you. I read you. I look at your name. And I thank God you're here with me. So thank you, Glenn, for being here with your camera today. You we made a special trip out here. And uh, uh, it's always nice to have you around. You're a dear friend and I love you, Glenn. And Glenn, by the way, uh, is a manager of the Minneapolis school bus system. Now so, you've given me a promotion. Well, you deserve it because <laughs> I've never seen a school bus dirty on the street. I've never seen one banged up. I've never heard of one out of, off schedule. So I think you're doing a wonderful job. 20,000 school buses leave every morning and pick up 35 passengers and take them across town to the schools they're going to. How many buses? Uh, oh, I don't know, what, 3,000, maybe 200, a couple dozen? Couple hundred. All right. Uh, so it's great. Glenn is in the transportation business and uh, Glenn and I are going to do a little conversation about buses and transportation you might enjoy. So uh, this is it. Finally, this is it. Now you can go get something to drink and say, well, thanks, Phil. That's over. Leave comments, leave questions, and we'll see you here and there. And we'll talk about this and that now and then. Right if you get work and hang by your thumb. After I shut off the camera, you can buy lunch. Okay. <laughs> Bye.